Hey, welcome everybody to the Daily Mastermind. I am Paul Baxter, Implementation Coach for the Mortgage Mastermind Group. And guys, girls, I can definitely tell you I'm here to help you grow. Today what we're going to be talking about is marketing to referral partners and specifically focus on creating relationships. Marketing to referral partners is all about one thing. No matter what you're doing, no matter what you're sending, it's all for one reason, and that's to give you an opportunity to create and develop that relationship. And so that's what we're going to talk about is how do we focus on creating that relationship? How do we get a good referral partner marketing program going? You know, what's the beginning steps? If you really want to implement this, you know, having these good ideas is one thing, but having the steps, knowing where to begin, where do you start with a good strategy can be the difference in, in, in it working for you or it not working for you. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to talk about where do you get started. Today's the getting started point. Referral partners come from lots of different sources. The obvious sources are real estate agents, your title reps, your financial planners, but there's also a whole lot of not so obvious sources that can be tremendous referral sources for you too. Insurance agents are probably the top of that list. You know, they need lenders just as much as you need them, and there's referral opportunities there. They develop relationships with their clients and customers, and they create those trusted relationships that people are asking them for their advice when, hey, I'm looking to move, Mr. Insurance Agent, do you, you know, can you recommend somebody good that isn't going to take advantage of me, you know, can you recommend somebody good that's going to help me do that and save money on my mortgage, you know, they get referrals as well. Divorce attorneys, there's a great, that's a whole strategy in and of itself, but it's a great referral source. 203K consultants, for those of you who are working those 203Ks, the, the, especially the fulls, those consultants are great opportunities for you to develop a relationship. Same thing with home inspectors. I mean, it's kind of the same, they, they go hand in hand with one another. Why not develop a relationship there and be that referral source for that person? Senior community center managers, for those of you doing reverse mortgages, local VA administrators, become buddies. Create a relationship with the local VA administrator, and then when an event happens that's VA related, you think you're not going to get notified or noticed? You think when a veteran walks into the office and says, hey, my wife and I are looking to buy a house, do, do I get any benefits as a veteran? I'll tell you what, why don't you give my good friend Paul a call, he'll be able to guide you through that whole process. Even AC guys, I mean, the reason I put AC guys in there is just to paint the picture, to kind of display to you guys and girls that anybody can be a referral source. Anybody can be a referral source, so develop those relationships with, with all the people that you come in contact with in your life because you can refer them. You're going to hear about, you know, have an opportunity some down, somewhere down the line that everything's great with the brand new house except the AC. Oh, give my good friend Mr. AC guy a call. Now you're referring them, and they'll remember those things, and they refer you back. Now we're going to focus our conversation today on real estate agents with scripting and things like that because that's the most common of what most of us on this call are focusing on, creating referral partner relationships with real estate agents. Remember, though, that the scripts that I provide you today, the things that we talk about, the things that we say can be translated to any referral partner relationship, right? The thing you have to do when you talk about creating a marketing to referral partners strategy is to make sure you do not put the cart before the horse. This is the number one thing that I see uh, my you know people that I work with, members, one-on-one -on -one clients. This is the biggest mistake that we make. We start marketing, we start getting our message out there without having a good plan for following up, without having a good plan in place for how we're going to convert that person. How are we going to get that relationship? So let's put the cart before the horse, and that starts with your follow-up plan. Right? That begins with having a good follow-up plan. So before you start calling, you need to know exactly what you're going to say. Before you send that email, you, know, you need to know exactly what you're going to say in that email that's going to get them to respond to you. You need to make a plan that each step of that plan has a purpose and then implement that plan. No follow-up plan is the leading cause of failure for 
any marketing that we implement. A lot of you have heard me talk about this before. I've, I've, I've flat out said it to people before. Look, if you don't have a plan in place for following up, do yourself a favor and don't even send the marketing piece out. You know, if you're utilizing uh, that agent, ma uh, what is it, the agent mastermind system, if you're utilizing that and you don't have a plan to follow up with, with the agents that you're sending that to, don't even bother sending it out. Don't even bother. You know, if you're implementing the uh, realtor needs assessment, being able to offer a realtor needs assessment to, to agents to help them grow their business and you don't have a plan for following up with the agents that you call on that, don't even bother beginning it. Don't do it because you're shooting yourself in the foot. Far worse than getting a no at the end of your, uh, of your first phone call is not following up. That is far worse because then all any hard work that you put forward, every time you miss that opportunity of follow up, every time you don't follow that plan exactly, all the hard work that you put in beforehand goes flying out the window. So here's an example of not having a follow up plan. This is what not having a follow up plan kind of looks like. The yellow calls a producing real estate agent. Uh, he has researched. Remember, we like to research our people. So the yellow calls a producing RE agent. He has researched and says, hey, Freddie McRealty, I'm Paul Baxter with Legacy Mortgage. I understand you're pretty serious about growing your business. And, well, I'm pretty serious about growing mine. I would love to treat you to a cup of coffee and find out there is something I can do to help you grow your business. Is Thursday at 3 or Friday at 10 better for you? And then Freddie McRealty answers that with, ooh, sorry, Paul, I'm just way too busy right now to meet you. Maybe some other time. The loan officer understands that Freddie McRealty actually is busy because he's a producer. We know this because we researched him. And it determines that he said no, and that's the end of that story. It's a pretty sad story the way it ended, isn't it? We made that. We... we the hardest part is picking up that phone and making that initial dial. We know this. Everybody on this call, I've had a conversation just looking at who's on the call. I have had a conversation with every single person on this call with us right now today specifically about how difficult it is to pick up that phone and make that first call, how hard it is to make that call. And if you did it and then you get this, sorry, Paul, I'm just way too busy right now to meet you, maybe some other time. And the LO understands that the RE agent is actually busy because he's a producer and he determines that he said no to meeting me and that's the end. So all of that effort, all of that mental preparation, all of that motivating I had to do for myself to get myself to pick up that phone and make that dial and they said no and I'm just going to let that be the end that's not a good follow-up plan. That's no follow-up plan whatsoever. That's not having a follow-up plan. Here's what it looks like, or an example of what it looks like if you did have a follow-up plan. The LO calls the producing RE agent. He has researched and says, hey, Freddie McRealty, I'm Paul Baxter of Legacy Mortgage. I understand you're pretty serious about growing your business, and, well, I'm pretty serious about growing mine. I would love to treat you to a cup of coffee and find out if there's something I can do to help you grow your business is Thursday at 3 or Friday at 10 better for you to which the RE agent replies sorry Paul I am just way too busy right now to meet you maybe some other time the loan officer again understands that the RE agent is actually probably busy because he's a producer and well things change a little bit when you have a follow-up plan in place Instead, the loan officer says, of course you're busy. Like I said, I know you're serious about growing your business. I will try another time, Freddie. In the meantime, keep doing, a, keep doing the great work you are on your business. Oh, and keep your eyes open for some of the free training tools I provide agents uh, for you or your team may find them cool. And then when the LO hangs up that phone call, he takes a note on his cool tracking sheet that he's got, and he marks that he called on so-and-so date because he knows he's going to call every week because that's part of his follow-up plan. 
and then he adds Freddie's email address to his six-step email campaign that will reinforce his phone call. Oh, and before he's done, he adds Freddie's address to and name to tomorrow's greeting card list. And um, we yet to have the the end is yet to be determined on this one, guys. So, do you see the difference in what it looks like if the loan officer does not? have a follow-up plan, he still made the call, you got the gumption up, you took every ounce of energy, you motivated yourself and you made that dial. Congratulations. Don't let it end because most of the time the RE agent's going to tell you, no, for whatever reason, I'm working with somebody, I don't have time. Oh, I already got stuff going on, I'm way too busy, oh, I'm already got a lender that I work with. Blah, 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 that's no that's no right now, but only right now. And if you let it end, all of that motivating that you did to get you to pick up that phone goes flying out the window and you got nothing to show for it. This way, I still got something to show for it. I told them, of course you're busy. Like I said, I know you're serious about growing your business. I will try another time, Freddie. And in the meantime, keep doing the great work you are. You know, I gave him a compliment. Oh, oh, and keep your eyes open for some of the free training tools I provide agents. You or your team may find them cool. Hmm? Hmm? Planted a little seed there. I'm letting them off the phone. I didn't ask for anything else. I planted a small little seed, but now on the back end, now's when my follow-up plan starts, right? Now my follow-up plan begins. I take notes on my tracking sheet. I mark that I called him because I know I'm going to need to do that again. I add his email address to my six-step drip campaign, and I set it up that I'm going to send him a greeting card. Okay. So you, you make those calls and then you add her to that six, you add her to your follow-up plan and having a plan, and that's what we're going to cover now, or the pieces to that plan. How do you create that so that you don't have an end because your, your first call didn't go as well as you wanted it to, or they, they didn't accept your call to action? No doesn't mean no, it just means not right now, okay? So, Let's set up your follow-up plan. The first thing you need to do is set up your tracking. And you're going to use a separate tracking for different referral types. Like if it's agents, you're going to have a tracking just for your agents. If it's divorce attorneys, you're going to have a tracking just for your divorce attorneys, your insurance agents, so on and so forth. You need to have separate tracking for each different referral source. And you can use an Excel spreadsheet. You can use Google Drive. You can use your CRM system. And when I say CRM system, I mean any CRM system. Those of you using Mortgage Web Success, yes, you can use that for your tracking. It has a very robust CRM system that has everything you need, including notes, um, can do all that in PipeDrive. Um, yeah, you absolutely can do all that in PipeDrive. Um, you, PipeDrive is the perfect place to do it because that allows you to separate those groups. And then you can even have subgroups within groups on PipeDrive, Peggy, which makes it even more easy to track those people. Like if you've got agents but you want to subgroup your A agents from your B and C agents, you can do that inside of PipeDrive. That's one of the beautiful things about it. Um, for those of you using Mortgage Web Success, like I said, you can do the same thing inside there, and it's got a really great system for taking notes and things like that. It's just not going to trigger you in terms of tasks. If you're using the agent marketing system, the single property website system, has a fantastic CRM system, including the ability to, to assign you tasks and trigger you to remember tasks. The only key element there is you've got to log into the system to get your task calendar and open your tasks. Now you can assign a notification that it'll send an email notification, but again, to get those on an actual calendar, you do gotta log into the system. But it's a great system and allows for notes, it allows you to set tasks and everything else in between. 
So there's lots of different places that you can use to track. The key element, the thing that I want to drive, drive in here is that you have to track. If you're going to do any kind of follow-up system for any sort of consistency, you, want, you have to be able to track what you've done already. You've got to know where in the process each and every prospect is. If you've made a call six times to this guy, but this guy's only gotten two calls, well, then you need to know that because for me, my sixth call is a little bit different than my second call. I may have a little fun with it. If I've called five times already and gotten a voicemail on the sixth time, I might do something fun. Hey, hey, hey. you knew it was going to be me calling. You know I love talking to your answering machine every Monday. Listen, I'm going to call you again next week. I just wanted to follow up, make sure you don't need anything. And oh, by the way, as consistently as I am about calling you and following up with you, that's how consistently you can guarantee that I am with following up with any clients we work together. So give me a shout. Look forward to hearing from you, blah, 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 blah. Um, Jeff is asking, wouldn't you have to log into PipeDrive as well? No, Jeff, with PipeDrive, it has a direct integration or sync directly into your Google Calendar, which for me, I'm an Android user, so anything that syncs with my Google Calendar now syncs with my Android Calendar, so my pipe drive would actually sync directly with my, my calendar right there on my, on my phone, on my smartphone. So that's one of the big benefits of that is that sync ability with pipe drive directly into Google Calendars. Um, I'm not positive about it, but I believe it does have an Outlook sync, but I, the sync is seamless with Google. I know that's what it was built for. I don't know how to set that part up with the calendar. Um, We'll get into that uh, later, another time, Peggy, and, and I can show you, but it's pretty simple. You just go into your settings section, and you go into, oh, it's a button that you just, you literally click one Google sync, and it syncs all of your Google stuff. No, Google mark, Agent Marketing does not have that sync to your Google Calendar, which is why you've got to log into Agent Marketing. All right, so make your tracking sheet and be able to track. So you can see the little the, the, the headers I've got. I've got name, I've got company, email address, phone, address. Um, are they on my list, meaning are they going to get my emails? Uh, did I call them? Have I met them? Have they given me any referrals? Have I had any closings with them and notes? You know, it's important to track all those things. I want to know how many closings versus how many referrals. Are they giving me junk or are they giving me good stuff? Right? That's important to know. You must have an end game in mind for targeting new partners. Otherwise, you chase people endlessly. And this is another, this is one of those big mistakes that I see a lot of mortgage lenders make when it comes to referral partner marketing is because they've got them on a list and they know that they're a producer, they don't want to upset them in any way and so they're just going to keep sending them that email and they're not opting out so I'll keep sending them that email or, or you call them once or twice and they hung up at you but you're going to keep sending them the cool email. Uh, and the free stuff because you you know you never know. Have an end game in mind. Look. A good friend of mine, Cindy Ionson, quoted this, and, and I'll never forget it, and I say it often. Some will, some won't, so what? Next. That's the mentality you've got to have when it comes to trying to find referral partners to partner up in your business. You're going to have a personality match with some of them. Some of them you're not going to have a personality match with, and, and that's okay. You know what? You're not going to have a personality match with, with someone that is likely going to be a producer, somebody that makes a lot of money in their real estate business, and you know what? They don't want to partner with you. Okay. There's someone else that is a producer that does want to partner with you, that is a good personality match, that you two would be best friends, hanging out every chance you got, water skiing on Sundays, 
happy hour on Thursdays kind of friend, and they're a producer too, so you're going to find the right ones. You're also going to bump into some that are not a good fit for you. Some will, some won't. So what next? That requires that you have an end game in mind when you're talking about target partners. And, I'm, and I mean, you don't, I don't mean one phone call they said no to you, yeah, move on, fine, they're jerks, they hung up on me, move on. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Give them a chance first. Remember, according to the sales statistics, 90% of sales happen after the fourth no, 90%. And so it's more likely that somebody is going to hang up on you or say no to you, that they're too busy, or that they're already working with somebody else the first time you call them. That's the likely answer, guys. We are more likely to run into that than we are to run into somebody saying, oh, wow, that, thank you so much for calling me today, Paul. I would love you to treat me to a cup of coffee, and I would love to divulge to you exactly how you can help me in my business. That's not going to happen, but once if, you know, like I said, one out of ten times that may happen to you, but it's more likely that we're going to get a no or a hang up or, or a voicemail or I'm too busy for you or I'm working with somebody else already. Give them an opportunity, okay? Give them a chance first, and I always say, you know, I like to say give people, you know, 30 to 60 days is the right amount of time. If you're consistent, if you're doing something consistently, and after 60 days, they're still not going to take your call. They're still hanging up on you. They're still being rude when you call or they, and they do answer. Cool. Beat it. You're the some won't. See you next time. Out of here. Right? I think it's important when we're doing that to have six or more emails or videos pre-written or recorded to stay in front of them when they're not hearing our voice though and this gives us that added warmth this gives us that added ability to kind of get them excited you know not excited but kind of warm them up to the idea that we're going to be calling them that we're, that we are targeting them and so those six emails I've written them up for you the first one would be something like this hey hello Freddie as I mentioned I like to help my real estate friends grow their business I am always searching the web for ideas I came across this one, insert link, and that's just a, you can set a, you guys remember we set up, um, what is it called on the Google where you set up a notification to get uh, alert, excuse me, I was having a moment there and could not remember the, the alert, <laughs> where we set up alerts on Google, so I could set up an alert that was like real estate, um, real estate business ideas and get an alert every week and just send this out. Every week I could send that out. I came across this one and wondered if it was something you do in your business. So now I'm asking a question in that initial email. I don't think that that's going to generate a response. I mean, I did it with the purpose. You know, I said in the very beginning you want to make sure that you're making a plan that has a purpose and that you implement that plan. And so the plan that I've got, my purpose behind this is to ask a question that, yes, purposefully it does prompt a response. Do I expect one? No, it's the first time I'm emailing them. I'm not expecting one, but I'm putting it out there, making it sound more as if you're a friend already and we're just having a conversation and I'm asking you questions about your business. That's all. Okay, so I came across this one and wondered if it was something you do in your business. I have a whole archive of links and trainings like this. If there is anything, wait, I can't read it, I got my control panel in the way. If there is anything I can help you with, let me know. Oh, and I am also able to answer any of those tough mortgage questions you or your clients might have. I look forward to speaking with you soon. Paul Baxter, Legacy Financial, 727-247-221-6649. I missed my number there. All right? And then, you know, email number two goes out one week later, exactly a week later. Now, I can do this if I have a CRM system. I can typically do this automatically. I can set up a drip campaign and set this up automatically. If I don't have that, if I'm just using Google, I can set up a canned response and send this out. I just have to make sure that I have it time blocked on my calendar 
to make sure I do not forget my once a week message and it has to go out the same time the same day every week that's important because you're reiterating that you're that cool guy that's providing this cool information remember it goes back to what we said earlier in our little script of course you're busy oh and keep your eyes open for some of the free training tools I provide to agents so I'm just following up on what I promised them right so we next week goes by I got the second one hey here is something I thought you and your team may be interested in insert the link there again comes straight from my Google Alerts stuff didn't have to do anything special to get that content I'd love to know what types of lead generation ideas you implement in your business it is something I believe one can never know too much about if I can help at all with lead generation don't hesitate to give me a call oh and I offer a full pre-approval not just prequal that has helped my current partners convert the leads they generate at a much higher rate so what I did there is I tied in you know I asked them a question about lead generation hey I can help you with lead generation and oh by the way if you'd like to convert more of those leads into closings you should give me a call because I can do that too right purpose plan out what I'm gonna say and have a purpose so now I've got two emails that I can send to somebody that I just called one time right off the bat the next week I send that third email hello Freddie I'm sending a special message to all my real estate friends rates are still at or below four percent all indications are that it will not be lasting much longer here is what you can do to help your prospective buyers. One, have them contact me to get pre-approved instead of just pre-qualified. This gives your buyer the power of a cash buyer and may be able to get more home for the money. They probably should have put, and they may be, a, they may be able to get more home for the money. And two, contact me how to get this message out to your database to encourage any fence setters to hop down now I look forward to speaking with you soon so I've given him the benefit hey here's something that you need to know about I'm, I'm making a special attempt to get in touch with you and tell you about rates they already knew that but I'm making that special attempt and then I give them two specific things that they can do and how to take advantage of the fact that there are special rates right now both of them referring back to me come back to me and I'll be able to help you so that's the third email fourth email hello Freddie just wanted to send this over it's a link I thought of you when I read it and that can be anything it can be something funny it can be a business update it can be housing market related news whatever it is something that makes you think of them now if you've had any sort of conversation with them again this is generic so I would make it something that is biz, you know real estate industry related something not specific about baseball because you send that out to your to everybody that you're following up with and you got Susie over there she's not a baseball fan guess what you really weren't thinking of Susie when you when you found that were you no it's got to be something you know related to the real estate business let me know if I can help you with anything growing your business or getting to the closing table faster I am here to help so again I don't have to string out my call to action I've contacted them several times at this point by the fourth letter they've gotten three other emails from me plus three phone calls plus a greeting card I've contacted them seven times already so on this fourth one I don't need to go into a long-winded kind of closed call to action I'm just keeping my name I'm keeping in front of them keeping them warm about the idea that I'm contacting them five hey Freddie I was wondering do you use Facebook for business I mean I would love to speak with you about that the good the bad just get your opinion on it here is my Facebook business page insert link here so now I'm driving traffic to my business page any feedback would be greatly appreciated again good bad just would love your feedback if you need help creating a Facebook business page I would be glad to it can help brand you when a prospect is looking at whether or not to hire you 
let me know if you need to get anyone pre-approved. I look forward to speaking with you soon. Paul Baxter, Legacy Financial, and my phone number still messed up. But do you see what, what happened there is, is I offered them something cool, and I offered a solution to it. I wanted their opinion on it, knowing already that they, it's something that they're going to want, and I offered a solution on how to do it, including a link to mine. Whether it's good, bad, or not, I'm asking for their feedback on it. And then I give them why it's a benefit. And then, of course, you have to have a call to action. Remember we talked about it the other day? What do every top producer has that common trait? They all ask for the business every time without fail. I don't want to not, I don't want to not ask for business, so let me know if you need to get anyone pre-approved. And then my final one, hey, Freddie, let's have lunch. As you know, I'm always providing my real estate friends with information to help keep them on top of their business. The purpose is to develop mutually beneficial relationships with like-minded people. I would love to get to know more about you and your business to find out if I have things that can help you grow it. All right? Get to know you and your business and find out if I have things that can help you grow it. Please accept this invitation to lunch. Just call me and let me know if Thursday the 6th or Tuesday of the 11th is better for you. So again, I'm making my strongest point. This is the last this at this point, we are 6 weeks in. Right? We're 42 days into the into the process. 42 days. I've been I've been chasing him 42 days. So after this one, I'm going to call them one more time, and if I don't have a lunch opportunity, I'm probably going to move on to the next. I'm going to go ahead and, and move on to the next. The next thing is to have your greeting cards bought. If you're going to buy handwritten, do the handwritten greeting cards, have them bought. Go out and make them. If you're going to utilize PowerPoint and make your own greeting card like our good friend Ed Nowerall did, he, you know, he just had his assistant make up a little card and print off those. That, that's a handwritten card, too. It doesn't have to be fancy. Design them. If you're uh, you know, like our good friend Alan who uses the send-out cards, if you're using send-out cards like Bill Rogers uses send-out cards, you can go in and have it pre-designed. Do it beforehand. Pre-write on your cards. Don't just wait until you've got one to send and start trying to think of what. You'll sit there five minutes, and you could have handwritten four, four cards in five minutes if you know what you're going to say already. If it's something you've got to think about, you'll sit there, well, I don't want to say it that way. I want to say it that way. Have it already written out. Shoot. Take the time while you're sitting watching the game on Sunday and write a bunch of them. You don't need to insert the name. You can do that later. Just write the, hey, congratulations on a great real estate business. I'm always here to help you grow in any way, you know, here to help in any way. Just write that part out. Even maybe sign them. All you've got to do now is insert a name and address the envelope. Sit down and knock out a bunch of them while you're watching Dancing with the Stars. Why not? It doesn't take much time or effort to be able to do that. But there's, the, there's my little script of what I'd write if I'm sending out the, uh, the greeting cards. Hey, Jim, congratulations on a great real estate business. I am always here to help in any way. Paul Baxter. And then I put two or three, maybe four, depending on what kind of producer they are, cards in, there, in the envelope and send it on its merry way. The key is to have these things in place before you begin to market. Remember, on that first call, that you know, I, I can tell you it's a follow-up if you've sent them something. Or, look, it's a cold call. You know, I, I'm not going to try and blow smoke up your skirt. It's a cold call. It is. But you can, you can make it effective. It doesn't have to be a bad thing that you're cold calling. It can be very effective. But that first call, they don't know you. They don't know you, trust you, or like you. By the second call, and, and here's the thing about that first call. Let, if they hang up on you, they're not going to remember you for the second call. They'll remember you from the second call on. Okay, That's just the way it works. That first call, they don't remember it. If you have a conversation, they might, which is even that much better for you. But on the first call, they don't know you. But by the second call, they've gotten a call from you. They've now gotten an email from you with a cool tip, some, something 
provided to help them, and they've gotten a piece of mail from you in their mailbox that just said congratulations on a great business. They've gotten a greeting card from you. So now by the second call, you've touched them three times already on that second call. Now you're on the fourth. By the fourth call, they've seen your name and heard your voice multiple times over and over and over and over again. They keep seeing your name and hearing your voice. And that's where you get that power is, is that's why consistency always wins the day. And that's why consistency and having a follow-up plan will help you be consistent. You know, having that plan in place allows you to have that little bit of consistency. You know, consistency ju isn't just, you know, because you're going to, it makes you have to make those calls every Monday. No, consistency actually gives you impact in the calls themselves. You know, the first week they haven't heard you, they don't know you. By the next week, you've put a couple of things in front of them and you're calling them again. Oh, they've already heard your voice once on their voicemail or whatever. Oh, now you're getting a little warmer. Now you're getting a little warmer. And each time you do it, it goes a little bit further and a little bit deeper and a little bit warmer. And, and as you break time, you know, 90% of sales happen after the fourth no. You're going to get to your fourth no fairly quickly in the process. Halfway through this, you will have contacted them 15, 20, 30 times through emails and, and cards and calls. At the end of the day, you've contacted them multiple times. You've given them every opportunity to be a yes. And if they're going to be a yes, they would be by the time you're done. If, you, if you've got your follow-up plan in place, if they're going to be a yes, they will be when you get through it. Determine how many people you need to deploy your follow-up plan on to get the impact you want in your business. So I, I know that there are others out there that tell you you have to make X number of calls every Monday. And, and no, you don't. No, you don't. You need to make the number of calls every whatever day you choose. You need to make the exact number of calls that it takes to 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 achieve your goal. You don't need to make 40 if 20 can achieve your goal. You don't need to make 50 if 10 can achieve your goal. You don't need to meet with 20 people every week if meeting with five can achieve your goal. Okay? That's the reality of it. So what you've got to determine first is what is your goal? What is your why? What is your goal? If you want five loans a month, well, you need 10 real estate agent relationships, right? If you're working with producers, people, you know, if you're targeting the right way, you're going to be working with people who are doing more than one transaction every single month. And if you're developing that relationship, the smart agents, they're, they're doing, you know, they'll have two or three people that they work with, and you're going to get your opportunities, right? If you want 10, you need 20. How many calls does it take to get one face-to-face -face opportunity? How many face-to-face -face opportunities does it take to get that one relationship? How much follow-up did it take to get that relationship to blossom into a referral? How many referrals did it take to get to that closing table? Though that's the way you want to figure out how many calls you need to make or how many agents or how many people to deploy your strategy on has nothing to do with a set number that some other person threw in front of you. That's their why. That achieves their goal. What about your goal? That's what you want to achieve is your goal. How many does it take? How many does it take? And that's part of figuring out. We've gone through that process. We've gone through that formula, exactly how to figure it out. You know, Chad goes in depth with his creating a compelling future. That, that whole thing, that entire creating a compelling future, breaks down exactly what you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis to, to get to where you're happy place, to, to achieve your business freedom. That's what creating a compelling future breaks down for you. It shows you what your business freedom is and how to get there. Once you've got that, you know how many you've got to get. You know, once you know what your why is, you know how many people to deploy your follow-up strategy on. Okay, so you now have a follow-up plan. How do you get people to deploy it on? How do you get those people? How do you get those people? 
Well, you guys are going to have to wait till tomorrow to get the complete how-to on that. What we're going to be doing tomorrow is talking about your cheese. What do you have that is a bait? What do you have that's bait? Some of you got agent marketing, the single property website system. Some of you have the agent mastermind system. Some of you have the realtor needs assessment. Some of you have uh, mobile voice routing. Some of you have uh, the mobile app. I can't remember the name of the new mobile app that everybody's talking about. Um, I did some research on it recently, and I, I, eh, I, I still think it requires that people, you know, I don't know about you, but I, I use my phone quite a bit. And apps on my phone, if I don't use them, I delete them. If I'm not using them, they're either, if I don't delete them, that's because they're hidden from my main screens of view. People typically have a set few that they frequent. So I'm not really sold on that yet. But there's cheese. I mean, it's all cheese that's out there. So we're going to talk about what cheese you have and how do you get that cheese to take somebody from how do you introduce the cheese on your cold call and how do you leverage that cheese through your follow-up plan to get people to that sit-down face-to-face opportunity for, uh, to meet. So that's what we're going to be talking about tomorrow is using cheese as bait. And what kind of cheese do we all have? Um, there are some that are common. We all have some of them. Some of us you know, have more than others, but that's okay. We all have some sort of cheese to be able to attract referral partners, whether it be the, the agents or the uh, divorce attorneys, insurance reps, title reps, there's cheese that will attract all of them. And that's all I've got for today, guys. That leaves us with a few extra minutes. Does anybody have any questions about what we covered today? Anyone? Anyone? Anyone with a question about what we covered today? Kind of covered most of them as we were going through it. Um, can uh, can do all that in pipe drive. You teaching that soon? Yes, Peggy. We will definitely be talking about pipe drive in the near future. Really cool little gizmo there um, with pipe drive. I think it's a, a fantastic, easy to use system. Um, I just don't want us to, you know, guys. That that I don't want us to ever turn into we're selling something every time we're on here. That's never going to be what we're about. So. Um, I tend to avoid looking at other, you know, I know agent marketing backwards, forwards, left side and right, um, but I tend to not talk too much about it just because I don't want you guys to feel like I'm selling it to you or feel like that's something you have to run out and buy to be successful with marketing because it's, I don't think that, you know, there's enough things that are available to us in, in the internet today <laughs> that quite frankly we can be successful without spending a dime on marketing. I also feel that there are some things that if you spend that dime on it, it can really enhance what you're doing. And I am not opposed. I am I am all for uh, that guy that puts it, you know, put a ten dollar bill in the machine and it spits out a twenty at the bottom. I'll stand in front of that machine all doggone day. That's not what I'm saying. I'm I just want you guys to know, you know, I don't want it to be that we're always selling some product on here. So please don't take it that way. But yeah, pipe drive is a is something we're definitely going to be talking about in the near future. Um, I've learned quite a bit about it recently. It's just a matter of being able to spend enough time to, to be knowledgeable enough about it to teach on it. So we're working on that, my dear. <laughs> Jeff, it's already paid for. I can appreciate that, brother. And like I said, man, the agent marketing... Um, the agent marketing CRM system is robust enough to do all the things you want it to do. I mean, it really and truly, it's got everything in it. The only dilemma is you don't get that, you don't get that sync um, with your Google Calendar or things like that. Like, look, I've got zero tasks due, tasks upcoming. Uh, new leads, total visitors, new property. So this is like my tasks list, right? It's showing me already right from my front page view. So it just, you have to come here and do it, but it's going to show me all those things. So I would go into clients and I would come here to add new. 
I am wondering, do you know, Jeff, I can export, but am I allowed to, do I have an import of any sort, or is this only going to take people that have filled out forms and manual entries? Absolutely, Bill, and thank you very much. I appreciate that, my friend. So it looks like it's only manual entries, but you know what, quite, quite frankly, lists. What do these lists do? Well, I got some stuff I need to start playing with. Oh, uh, okay. So as you're adding clients in, you can add them to lists. Yeah, there's my lists, and there's my lists of statuses, and there's my lists of priorities, and there's my lists of what I'm going to be doing with them. So that's what all those lists were about, is, is your categories and things. Yep, it's just that those lists basically were um, the different categories for when you're adding a person in. So I can create groups. Like I was saying before, you have the ability to create a subgroup. So if I, let me get out of here, and I come into lists, and I want to create a new um, group. Let's see, I'm going to just change family over to... Um, Divorce attorneys, right? So I can save that. So now if I'm in, let's save that. So now if I'm adding a client and I go add new and I'm putting all their information in and then I go groups, what group are they in? This guy is in the divorce attorney group, right? And then I save that. I can now sort through and just find my my different lists or people based on what their group is. It's just easier to track, just much easier to keep track of. And that's a big deal, guys, being able to keep track of what's going on, who you're supposed to contact, what they're part of, why it makes sense to contact them, and everything in between. Tracking is huge. Tracking, tracking, tracking. Guys, girls, that is it for me for today. I appreciate everybody coming in and spending a little time with me on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon. Hope you got a little bit of something out of today's class or at least learned something. I know I certainly did. I always do. Guys, girls, thank you so much for spending your time with me. I appreciate it. And we'll see you right back here, same time, same channel tomorrow. Have a great day, everybody. Bye now.